Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian of Marietta. A welcome to those who are worshiping online. You can find the liturgy and hymn information at our website in the bulletin section. And also added this morning was the liturgy for the commissioning we'll be doing later in the service. Thank you to our tech support folks today, Brad and Peter and Gwen. We appreciate them being with us. Thank you to David Nuss. Um, I believe we're also going to hear from the choir scholars and the bells uh, today. So that's going to be a wonderful addition. A thank you to Pastor Tim Pollock for recording our first scripture passage earlier this week. Tim is our presbytery's clerk and also is the pastor at Bloomfield Presbyterian. And Tim was Bonnie Donnelly's mentor during her time of study. There's a children's sermon available on the Facebook page. You can find it there. Let us worship the Lord. I invite you to join responsively in our call to worship. People of God, listen. Teach your children all that God has done.
Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin that we might find forgiveness and new life in Christ. Let us join in our unison prayer of confession. Holy and gracious God, you are all light and wonder and glory. You are our strength and our delight. You give us all we need to live, yet we are distracted by all that glitters, continually grasping for more. Rather than trust in your provision, we chase after our own happiness. Forgive us, Lord, and turn us back to you. Hear our personal confessions in this moment of silence. In unison, overwhelm us with your goodness and cover us with grace, for we know that you are the source of life, the fount of all that is good. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Hear the good news. Nothing in life or death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. May the peace of Christ be with you. If you're worshiping at home, I invite you to share the peace of Christ one with another. If you're worshiping at home today and you're by yourself, please know the peace of Christ is with you. We have a technical issue we're going to try to deal with. I'm going to ask that when we get to it, that Gwen, you go ahead and run the anthem I'm still looking for the file. I think I have access to it on my phone. We're trying to get Pastor Tim's uh, reading in the right place. He did send it to me. Um, Peter, if I send it to your email, is there a shot for you guys to get it on there? Okay, so I will see if I can find it and forward it to, to you. So uh, when we get to that point, I'll invite you to run the scholars first. And if we have to wait for a couple minutes while you get it ready and received, we will, we will do that, but I think I can find it real quick. Let us turn our hearts again to God in prayer as we ask the Spirit to illumine our way. Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us of your promises that we might hear your truth and enjoy you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Or the, second, the second scripture, perhaps by then, things will be queued up for the other. I'm reading Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, and we'll get back to the other two. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. 
Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, all right. Ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments.
God commanded our ancestors to teach their children, the psalmist says, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the words, works of God, but keep his commandments. Yes, the psalmist reminds us of the importance of teaching future generations about the faith. And usually when we consider learning about God's glorious deeds, promises, and blessings, we think of settings like Sunday school classes. Worship may also come to mind. Sermons, hymns, the sacraments, baptism and communion also teach us. But teaching the faith to children and to adults happens in many, many other ways. We learn how God has acted, how to be faithful to the commandments, about the blessings we enjoy from the small interactions that happen between members of the community of faith. This pandemic has disrupted that. We don't just miss fellowship times like sip and chat because they're fun, We miss them because gathered around the tables in Fellowship Hall, we got to witness to one another. We got to share burdens with each other, and then that sharing is a teaching moment. We share joys in our lives and are reminded of God's faithfulness. And we learn how people put their faith into action in their jobs, in their homes, with their friends. Faith is taught in those one-on-one interactions between disciples. Each of us, each of us is a teacher of the faith. And please don't see that as adding pressure to how you live. It can be a positive motivator that helps us understand we can count on each other to strengthen our faith in community. Let me share something about this from a personal perspective as a pastor. We might think that pastors are the ones who do the teaching and pastoral care moments with folks when we visit with them or meet with them in our offices, and that does happen. But something amazing happens to pastors as well. The learning flows both ways. I learn about faithfulness when I visit a person in the hospital and see the incredible trust that they place in God. I see God's blessings when I hear about a life struggle a member is having and witness the wisdom that they are already bringing to the situation. I'm challenged about obedience to the commandments when I'm privileged to walk with a member who's navigating their way through a relationship struggle and that person is still showing love to people who are being very difficult to love. I know I've helped others. But I also know I have learned so much through the faithful witness by others during their times of trial. They have helped me set my hope in God and not not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. We'll be privileged today to commission Bonnie Donnelly to a formal pastoral role in our church. Bonnie certainly learned about the faith in formal settings throughout her life but she could also relate to you the countless ways personal interactions have trained her and brought her to this point where she can serve. In a special and important sense, Bonnie's call to serve is the result of what you as members of this church have taught her. Matthew gives us this story of wise and foolish maidens. They're waiting Some, as the story unfolds, appear to be much more ready for the appearance of this bridegroom. Much teaching of this parable centers around what the oil means and how we go about ensuring we have plenty of oil for our lamps. And certainly that's part of what we need to get out of this parable. God can bless us, teach us, and give us a measure of the Holy Spirit. But I heard another interpretation this week which adds, I think, an important layer to this idea of how we help one another. The wise maidens, they had plenty of oil. The foolish maidens had none or ran out at some point. So just as the bridegroom is approaching, the foolish maidens take off 
in search of more oil, and they miss out. Here's the unique perspective I heard on this parable in a class, an online class I'm taking right now from a fellow pastor. What if those foolish maidens, rather than worrying about the fact that they couldn't measure up to their wise sisters, had instead just stayed and placed their hope in being accepted by a gracious bridegroom? I know I find myself in the sandals of those foolish maidens. I've not always invested the time and the energy and the effort being sure I'm 100% ready when the bridegroom arrives. And that arrival, which we tend to sometimes view as the once-for-all coming of Jesus, happens again and again in our lives. The bridegroom comes and invites us to participate, to be blessed, and we aren't prepared. We've wandered away trying to find something to make us ready someplace else. But what if, what if when that occurs in our everyday life, we're just open and honest enough to say to Jesus, Jesus, you know, I know there are lots of people more ready than I am. I'm sorry I didn't do more to prepare. Please accept me. Oil or no oil? The saving God we meet throughout the Gospels and through Scripture is one who welcomes people no matter their readiness. The power in looking at this parable through this new lens reminds us, don't neglect the fellowship. Don't leave looking for answers in other places. The answers we need are right here in our midst, pandemic or not, political strife or not. We can teach one another and give one another what we need. And why don't we ever call out those wise maidens for their lack of generosity? They're operating under an assumption of scarcity. There won't be enough for both of us, they say. Go find it for yourself. And that often gets as interpreted as a lesson about some things you can't get from others. You have to learn it yourself. But that's not something that you can find easily in Scripture. Our God is a God of abundance who multiplies when we give and wants us to share with each other. We can and we should learn from each other. You know, there are plenty of practical implications in the life of the church. Seek ways to care for others, even as you find yourself having to be separated. Don't neglect phone calls and cards and emails and notes and all the other safe ways we can interact with each other. This is more important than it ever was. Remember, we're teaching each other in those moments, and each of us bears a responsibility to reach out and connect. As we commission Bonnie, seek in your own heart the call that God has placed before you. It might mean stepping into a new role somewhere in your life. The church might be one place. You need to consider that. The nominating committee will face a big challenge this year. Perhaps God has a role for you to play. And don't outright dismiss the question. Consider it prayerfully and carefully. You might just have the wisdom and the oil the church needs right now. Share your abundance. All of us have something we can share. Find it and share it. That may impact your response to our stewardship drive. That may mean you looking out for the neighbor that you have near you. That might be a gift to brighten another person's day. There are a multitude of ways you can bless others. Just remember, God gives us what we have so we can share. Follow through on that. Love others and work for justice. That's an oil we really, really, really need to share right now. No single event is going to cure the hatred and the anger and the injustice that exists in society. Ask God to open your heart to your own prejudices and open your eyes to those who are suffering, even if they're very different than you, and step into that moment. There is work for all of us to do. Let's keep teaching each other in the small ways Let's look out for each other. Let's be wise and caring. Jesus 
appears in our lives, when that happens, let's be ready to serve and help others be ready. Let's continue to learn and continue to teach no matter the challenges. Let's share the love God has given us and let's work on bringing God's justice into our world. Amen. I invite you now to follow along in the liturgy for the commissioning of a ruling elder that was one of the three sheets you were given. You will also need the hymn sheet close to you because it has the Apostles' Creed on the back of that as well. And I invite you as you follow along to join responsively when, uh, when the items are bolded uh, here at the beginning in the sentences of Scripture. We who are many are one body in Christ. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness, lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as we are called to the one hope of our calling, The Presbytery of Muskegon Valley Presbytery, the session of First Presbyterian of Marietta, is satisfied that Bonnie Donnelly has, has received preparation and instruction for pastoral service as determined by this presbytery. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, we will now commission Bonnie Donnelly to pastoral service in and for First Presbyterian of Marietta. Bonnie's commission also permits her to provide similar service to other churches of the Presbyterian Church USA, particularly in Washington County, if she is requested. Bonnie, do you want to come down front to answer the questions? Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ and the church universal and God's word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you fulfill your commission in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confession? Will you be governed by our church's polity? Will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? And will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? And will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? And will you be a faithful ruling elder in this commission, serving the people by proclaiming the good news, teaching faith, and caring for people, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? You stay right there. Um, in a minute, I'll invite the family to come down for a prayer. Uh, but in the meantime, let's all join together and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is customary in the Presbyterian Church at moments like this to have a prayer for the person being ordained, or in this case commissioned. Often we would invite other elders to come and join in the laying on of hands. That's not something we can easily or safely do right now, so we're going to ask Bonnie's family, with whom she's sharing household space, to come down and be our representatives in that process. So if you all will come down and gather around Bonnie. And you all can follow along in the prayer, and there is a portion for you to, uh, to pray as well in bold. Go ahead and reach out and touch, touch mom or grandma. Or <laughs> Almighty God, in every age you have chosen servants to speak your word and lead your loyal people. We thank you for Bonnie, whom you've called to serve you in and for First Presbyterian of Marietta, Give her gifts for the work of ministry. Fill her with your Holy Spirit so that she may have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus and live as Christ's faithful disciples. And please join together. God of grace and baptism, you have called us to common ministry as ambassadors of Christ, trusting us with the message of reconciliation. Give us courage and discipline to follow where your servants rightly lead us, that together we may declare your wonderful deeds and show your love to the world. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. Amen. Bill, you'll place the stole. Bonnie, may this stole be a reminder of God's calling of the gifts God has given you, of the responsibility and the grace God has given you, and of the acceptance and love and support this church shares with you. On behalf of the Presbytery of Muskegon Valley Presbytery and this congregation, I welcome you to this ministry. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him and all God's people said, Amen. Um, for those who came today, you will find at the parking lot entrance as you leave cupcakes available on a table there. You're invited to take one. These are individually packaged, so they're all safe and they were carefully prepared. Um, apologies for those of you who are at home. You can enjoy a virtual cupcake. <laughs> Let's turn our hearts again to God in prayer. God of life, you created the world and called it good. For in Jesus Christ, you came to redeem us. His resurrection is our promise of eternal life. By the power of your spirit, you claim us, you strengthen us, you prepare us to live with you in glory. In sure and certain hope, we pray for your world that we may live into your coming reign of justice and peace. Lord, we lift up the church, wherever it thrives, wherever it struggles, O oh Lord, we pray for ourselves and all our brothers and sisters in our nation and around the world. Keep us ever faithful to your gospel. Lord, we pray for those who govern. Grant them wisdom and a commitment to justice. For those who work and work so hard to run fair and honest elections, we are thankful 
For work still to be done, we pray you will grant them energy and protection and courage and discernment. We give thanks for decisions made by voters, Lord. We give thanks for decisions yet to be discerned, for legal cases to be adjudicated, for votes to be cast in runoff elections, Lord. We ask for prayers for that whole of those processes, Lord. We ask for your continued presence. May your spirit reign. May there be peace and wisdom and justice. We pray for President Trump and apparent President-elect Biden in this time. We pray, Lord, transitions when they come will be peaceful. We pray, O Lord, that all in our government will embrace democracy great gift you've given us. Lord, we lift up medical professionals who are treating those who are ill. We know the numbers are rising. We pray for those who continue to seek to develop vaccines and cures. We pray for those who are suffering with COVID and other serious illness. We pray for families in this time who love and support their members who are ill, Lord, and sometimes from afar. Help us in our society, Lord, to learn how to behave responsibly. We pray for our community right now, Lord, that is facing significant increases in spread of the virus. We lift up our world, O Lord, planet Earth. Heal its wounds. Make us better stewards of its its wonders and gifts. We lift up those who are dying, calm all fears, and welcome them into your peace. We lift up those suffering from anxieties and other behavioral health issues, Lord. We lift up those, Lord, who lack adequate shelter, who lack food. Feed and protect them. Lord, in every community, there are those among us suffering in silence. Comfort them in their secret sorrows, Lord, and speak to us so we'll know how to break through and let them know they have companions. We pray for all who seek your face this day. and We also lift up the burdens of our own hearts in this moment of silence. With thanks, O Lord, that you hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, we entrust all of life to you, gracious God, our Alpha and Omega, our only hope in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ we pray, and we use the words that you taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There are giving methods described in your bulletin. If you're worshiping at home, of course, you can give online. We've been very blessed with the gifts people have mailed to the church. A special thank you for that. Remember also that we are in our season of asking you to consider your gifts to the church in the coming years, so we encourage you to thoughtfully respond and prayerfully respond to that. There are offering plates here in the sanctuary near the entrances, and we invite you to leave your offering there as you leave today. If you brought one and during the offertory, we invite you to consider all the ways you might be able to bless others. Freely we have received, freely we give with gratitude and joy.
I invite you to join in our unison prayer of dedication. Gracious God, receive our gifts and token of thanks for your extravagant blessings, signs of trust in your coming reign of justice, peace, and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep awake, friends, for Christ is coming to gather us to him and to his welcome table, where we will feast in joy. May the grace of Christ surround you. May the love of God uphold you and the Holy Spirit spark you with unquenchable fire as you wait and work for the kingdom to come. Amen.